Good evening, everyone. Hi, it is I, Dungeon Master Dave. Not to be confused with any other Dungeon Master Daves. Um, it's purely just what I call myself because my name is Dave and I'm a Dungeon Master, but that's not my actual name. Um, my name on here is Slip518. And today we're going to be talking about monsters how to populate your world or not how to but what type of monsters you may want to populate your world setting with and this can come uh, one of several ways it's definitely it definitely depends on the scope of the setting as well um, now when considering what types of monsters you may are creatures you might want to populate your world with there's a few key things I like to think about so one when coming up with creatures consider setting scope and what type of monsters slash creatures would be available now oop, oh wow it does a that so then what type Let's find out what type do we want. And there's a few ways to go about this. Um, one of the most popular ways is to take classers from, wow, classers, ah, dyslexia, <laughs> but verbiage, you know, dyslexia verbiage. There's, you could take classic monsters or creatures from mythology, you know, lore, things like that, and bring them into your game. And like I said, it's one of the most popular things that uh, fantasy games do. You know, so you may have like the Manticore, the Catablepus, an Ogre, um, Elves, Demons, Devils, uh, Genies. These are things from real world mythology that have been passed down through the ages through various cultures. And they make intriguing creature concepts because face let's face it the world is filled with dozens or hundreds of fascinating creatures and monster types all you need to do is crack a book and read about it really you know like just dive in just pick a part of the world and type in mythology and boom you'll probably get a list like this long you know <laughs> so let's put that down classic creatures and then we'll put down some examples The second way to do this is to take real-world creatures, right? Um, but usually, now some real-world creatures actually. Let me put. Let me let me divide that into two subcategories. Real-world creatures, right? Natural habitat, and what I mean by that is like a bear, right? A bear might be a scary monster it's definitely a formidable foe um if you've ever seen the amc drama which was apparently based on the true story it's called the terror uh it's about a murderous polar bear as far as i know i had never finished watching it but it's probably a bear you know i doubt it's a yeti or some supernatural ghost it's, it's, it's a bear and polar bears can grow pretty large you know what i mean what do they can grow like nine feet tall just imagine a nine foot, okay, the ceilings in most houses are what, eight feet tall? Imagine an additional foot on that, and that is coming at you. Scary, huge, right? And that's real. N nothing's changed there. You know, giant squids, right? Just imagine being out in the middle of the ocean, and you're uh, you're stuck on a raft, and these tentacles come up. Like if, um, I believe it was in World War II, some soldiers, their boat suffered an attack they were on a raft and there are reports of these tentacles trying to pull them into the water uh giant squids and i know some people think when you think giant squid you think of like something that is uh just massive right um there are squids that are probably 50 to 60 feet long and they have been found but they're not 
massive per se. Most of the length is in their tentacles. You know, like think of a lizard, right? Lizard body might be this long, but the tail might be like this long. But uh, those are those are examples of real world creatures that could inhabit your world that you know can kind of uh, put a scare in the character. But the second half to that would be real world creatures that kind of been exaggerated, right? Real world creatures. Exaggeration. And what I mean is that is they have uh, supernatural features. Not necessarily super, like just something that's not natural, right? Like you might have a wolf that can uh, teleport or um, maybe like shoot flame, like grow flames out of its fur. Or you might have a bear with like three heads or I don't know, a, a scorpion that. Uh, when it when it stings you and it's poison, it digests you from the inside and you turn into like an, an ooze. Just something that makes or giant giant animals are a great example of this. Um, just think of like a giant scorpion, right? All right, scorpion about like maybe this size, maybe this big, depending on where you are. A giant scorpion. It's the size of a car now. Wow. You know, a lot of games have done that, and a lot of settings have done that, and you've seen giant creatures throughout. Uh, you know, various settings and various game types. Um, even in our own mythology, there are examples of like, you know, giant birds, giant people, they're called giants, <laughs> and they, they spread across the world. Um, so that would kind of actually, in some instances, uh, would be a, a mix of real world uh, creature exaggerated and classic creatures, but uh, you, can, you can exaggerate the creatures a little, you know, like, do I want a giant fire snake? Uh, oh, and there's the, four, the fourth option is uh original concept um this is where you come up with your own ideas here and i feel like the ones that resonate the most where you're going to get the biggest target audience will be the classic creatures with the mix of real world creatures um well real world creatures that will probably give you the biggest target audience. Why? Because we as humans can relate. We as humans, you know, heard those stories growing up. Um, we can have an idea of what that is. You know, when someone says, oh, you know, this is a, uh, what was I going to say, like a griffin, you know, like a, an image pops in your head. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, I understand what a griffin is or a dragon, you know, you, you kind of get an idea or it was a giant spider. Um, so you just picture a large spider. Some people might say, okay, the spider's like this big, so a giant spider might be this big. That's still pretty scary. But uh, when most people say giant spider, you know, it's probably more akin to Shelob from, you know, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and just the uh, Tolkien's Middle Earth. But it resonates with a person more. They understand that more. Now, I'm not saying original concept creatures can't pass. Like, people don't accept that. It's just you're going to have to do a little more to sell the idea. You know, like, um, with video games, it's easier, right? You just show a picture and the creature and its abilities. Uh, but if you're not doing that, um, you're going to have to show it, like, through some really good artwork, really good description. And people are going to have to kind of understand, like, okay, well, this is exactly how it works. Uh, think of... Why can't I think of his name? It's Charles Dickinson, I think it is. I'll be able to think of his name. Oh. No. I was totally off. <laughs> the author of Moby Dick. Think of the author of Moby Dick, right? Um, Herman Melville. Apparently his name is. I don't know why that slipped my mind, and it doesn't sound familiar, and I feel very horrible. Like, wow. It's like one of the classics. Well, he had to describe a sperm whale to people. And from what I understand, it was like a full chapter. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it was like 20, 30 pages where he describes what a sperm whale looks like. And you have to understand, this is the Wild West time period. A lot of people haven't seen a whale. They don't know what a whale is. So he had to get that image across. Um, kind of with an original concept, especially if you're doing it in writing. Uh, it might be good to have that ability, that force, that drive, you know, to be able to say, hey, this is this creature here, you know, this is the Tiddler Ripper, or this is the, uh, 
the cuckoo kachoo wood man, you know, something. And then people would understand it better. Um, but like I said, classic creatures would mix with the real world. Probably the biggest target audience. Original concepts, possible, but you just got to work a little harder to get that to work. Um, and then when you're coming into your monster types, too, right? Don't just go picking monsters willy-nilly just because you want it. Like, okay, I want griffins to be in it because they're cool. I want a manticore because it's awesome. I want giants because they're large and awesome, and I love giants. I need unicorns. Don't do it just because you want that creature there. Um, think of why that creature is there. Like, all right, if it was summoned, that's one thing. Uh, if it was created by, like, maybe a god that brought it here, that's another. If it's the result of a curse, you know, that, that that's another. Like, what is the story behind the creature? So, why that creature slash monster? Consider that when coming up with your setting. Don't be like, all right, you know, you're going to go on this adventure, you're going to go through this dungeon, and even though it doesn't match the scenery, you're going to be fighting... Uh, like ice giants it's like but why am i fighting ice giants we're like in a tropical environment it's hot here the ceilings aren't that high um we've been fighting a lot of like things that match the you know the dungeons like skeletons and zombies and uh insects and animals it's like consider that when coming up with a setting you know like what fills your world um but yeah, I don't even know if I can put a list for that one. I don't think I can. This hair is bothering me. Go away. <sighs> ah, it's, it's bothering me. You know what? Never mind. Don't worry about the hair. It's just going to make everything worse. All right, so why the creature? One. Decide why that creature. Two, how does it fit in? Three, what is its role? Four, how does it drive the setting potential? Right, like, there, 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 there are the questions. I said I don't think I can come up with any. I just came up with four out of nowhere. <laughs> um, I don't know. But yeah, so like I said earlier, decide why that creature in the specific setting. Once you come up in terms with that, how does it fit in? All right, so let's see. I'm going to have a, uh, a nautical campaign. Um, how do these flying creatures fit in? Uh, maybe they don't because we're out at sea, and usually things only fly um, out at sea if they're close to land. So if we're really far out and there's no land nearby, that might not fit. So we might have to scrap that. Let's come up with uh, something else that might fit. Uh, what is its role? Ooh, well, its role is probably to cause obstacles for the players, maybe help it, but uh, not just the players. you got to look maybe on an ecological scale, like, okay, um, here's a giant sea serpent, and it's lived in the primordial depths for quite some time. It feeds on these fish, and uh, it's the king of the ocean, so that's its role. How does it drive the setting potential? Oh, geez, the setting potential. Well, uh, it's a giant sea serpent, so there's plenty of things. You can have quests that revolve around it. You can have players that are weary to go out at sea because they heard tales of uh, this shipwrecking monster. So there's a lot of setting potential there. Um, you know, it could just be an obstacle, or at the same time, it could be a uh, full-on quest. Um, so those are some questions to consider. And now, what is the next section? What type? And that creature or monster? Um, here's another thing. What makes your monsters or creatures special? And this isn't for everything. Like, not all these questions are going to be for every monster. One, not all... Questions are for every creature slash monster. So, for example, if you have a giant or you have a... Well, I guess you could answer that question anyway, if, if you know what it is. Like, what makes these creatures special and you chose a giant? Oh, well, it's big, it's strong, it's and it crushes things. Um, but I feel like this is more for original creatures. 
if you're coming up with your own original concept for a creature, uh, you're going to probably want to get into what makes them special. So this is not, I don't think it's going to fit for every type of creature, just ones that you feel like you really need to do that with. So consider that to grasp what allures the players to want to pursue such a creature slash monster. Why did it underline right there? Did you see that? It's weird. Take that off. <laughs> Two would be, or three, wow, I'm on three. Uh, the, uh, why? Why, 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 why? The abilities of the creature slash monster that make it, make it a, a fun challenge. So, for example, um, let's say you go into the lair, you know, you're going to fight this uh, vampire squid, you know, and th that lives on land. Um, and you're wondering, how can I make this a fun challenge for my players? Well, you're obviously not going to want something that just stops them in their tracks, everything they do. Like, all right, this thing has 15,000 reactions. Yeah, it's going to interrupt everything they do. <laughs> so cool. You know, um, your players aren't going to enjoy that. They're going to be like, oh, great, I can't do anything because it stops everything I do. Um, but, you, you know, you can, you, can, you can challenge them a bit. Like, oh, every time I do this one thing, I can't because it has this ability. But uh, we can circumvent that with this. Or, oh, it looks like it's strong against this, but hey, maybe it's weak against that. You know, um, just certain things and uh, abilities and features. Uh, yep, abilities slash features. There we go. And your players, uh, you know, might find that interesting. Like, for example, um, let's look at dragons. You know, a lot of them have resistances to magic and uh, certain damage reductions to attacks. But they also have their weaknesses. Like, some dragons might be weak to a certain element. Some dragons might be weak to uh, magic spells. I mean, they're supposed to be powerful. Um, or let's look at older editions with skeletons. Skeletons pretty much had immunity or resistance to slashing and piercing damage, but they were bludgeoning did normal. And, you know, undead, they, they have, like, a lot of immunities. Like electricity, cold, paralysis, poison. Uh, but you could hurt them with, like, holy power, you know? You could be like, Zoom, here, I will heal you, but that hurts you. Ah, kind of gets around that. So those are uh, some things you might want to consider when coming up with a monster, you know, or monsters when you're creating them for your setting, if you indeed need to do that at all. And of course, you don't. You could use the default stock creatures that they provide. That's what they're there for. They have a whole 300 plus page book, you know, to do that, just to get you jumping in the game. Or you can have all monsters from scratch, which would be probably a huge undertaking. But I am sure plenty of people have done it. <laughs> um, so let's see, what do we have? Now all these questions. Are you asked what allures players want to pursue such a creature monster? The abilities and features of the creature monster that make it fun, challenging for the party. And uh, what does the creature bring to the world? Now you're wondering, okay, uh, what do you mean by that? Now, what I mean by what does the creature bring to the world is how has it affected the world? So this creature exists, right? Has it ever interacted with people, the environment, cr animals, other creatures? So let's say it has, right? Let's say there's something that, let's say there's a dwarven mining town, right? And they're mining. And then they come to this point where they uncover this cave. And there's this creature inside. And they have to shut down the mine because the creature is deadly as hell. And it scares the hell out of them. So they have to get out of there. And they've stopped all mining conditions. You know? And now, like, let's say the environment in the area is kind of, like, warped and twisted. And strange things are happening. And the air is very, like, heavy. And it just feels, like, depressed and down. 
you know that would be an example of what does this creature bring to the world like you know people are going to be talking about it uh ever since the uh the cave monster has been down there we've all been strung with, with like uh depression blah 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 uh, you know, two dozen miners have lost their lives before it was shut down, and uh, someone caught a glimpse of it and has like eight heads and ten arms, and it's frightening as hell. <laughs> you know, people will be talking about it. You know, stories will get out of control. Uh, your players will have to decipher: okay, is this real or is this fake? Because people exaggerate, and it would be uh, it'd be interesting twist. You know, like what is this creature? And it would drive them to kind of go down to that, the, sto the stories that the, the NPCs would have. Yeah. So that's that's what to consider when uh, bringing creatures and monsters to your world. Uh, this is another short episode, about 20 minutes. Uh, next week, I think I'm going to talk about optional rules for your setting. So let's put that down here. Um, make sure you pen that in your calendars optional setting rules and those are be unique to your setting all right but as I said before I'm Dungeon Master Dave uh, not to be confused with any other Dungeon Master Daves I'm probably not uh, and oh and if there are any other Dungeon Master Daves it's purely coincidental that I am introducing myself that way it's just like I said my name's Dave I'm a Dungeon Master and I uh, bring you this and have a good night and thanks for stopping by see you next time now I gotta hit the edge dream button good night everyone